What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Brent Watches Babylon 5 for the first time today. Episode 12, Sick Transit Veer. Jeff says this is the one where Veer becomes the emperor. I say no, no. I just say Veer is moving around. He's his ambassadorial role. That's I was checking my notes from last week. His ambassadorial role. His ambassadorial role is moving. He, he's going from place to place. That was what I was saying. Although Jeff says that this is a phrase that actually has uh, some much deeper meaning than I'm familiar with. So he's probably more right than I am. But that was my prediction. I don't know because this is the first time I'm ever seeing this episode and I don't know what happens beyond this point right now in the series of Babylon 5. You guys are welcome to comment down below. In fact, I would very much encourage you guys to do that. I will do my best to get in there and comment, respond to you guys. I love absolutely doing it. You guys are just blowing up the comments and it's, well, it's a lot. So uh, you guys do that, but I do ask, please remember no spoilers, no spoilers for anything that happens beyond this point. And, and that also includes, and I know you guys love this. I, I know you guys are trying to, you're, you're so desperate for us to get it all. Spoilers also includes connecting dots from past episodes to this one. And the reason why that's really important here is because Jeff and I are, are pretty much, I think, committing to phase two of the show of being Babylon 5 for the second time. And that's where those connections get made. So don't rob the second watch because we're so excited right now. Just let us do that. And, you know, Jeff and I, we're going to we're gonna talk about our emotions and what we see and ask rhetorical questions for where we are right now. You guys out there, we hear from so many of you just having a blast uh, kind of really living that first watch through our eyes. So we invite you to do that. Make sure you join us on Monday when Jeff and I get together to talk about the whole thing. But for right now, let's get into this episode. I promise this one's recording. I'm not having to do a second recording on this one like I did last week. So let's get into this one and watch Sick Transit Veer. Why does everybody have new uniforms? Good morning. Now let's take a look at the manifest, see who's coming in Is today. she naked? She's absolutely mm. naked. This is a dream. Oh, my gosh. Rosy ships. She's going to wake up screaming, transport. isn't she? All right. Maybe, yeah, what if this is an Ivanova's dream? What if this is somebody road. else's dream? It's Marcus's dream. That's where we are. What? It's Ivanova's dream. Yeah, oh. there it is. You know, she oh. even wakes up sweaty, beautiful. Her makeup's perfect. Her hair is. The time is. She has like perfect bedhead. July third, twenty two sixty. Have a nice day. That's a cool picture of the moon over her bed. Uh oh, back on Earth. Or, Mimbar. Centauri. Okay, got it. Because of the really bad Roman. There you go. <laughs> Just looking, really. I, I didn't touch a thing. Is this, this is the new emperor? Stick, but there was this large flying thing that I tried to, you know, swat. The emperor has just finished reviewing your reports from Minbar. He asked me to convey his compliments on your hard work. Even if some parts of it do read as if they were written by Ambassador Malari. He advised me on a few things. I yeah. thought as much. Lando belongs to the old school. He thinks we must be protected from the truth. But these are perilous times. We must have accurate information about what other worlds are doing. You would do well to follow your own judgment in future. Thank you, Minister. We have arranged for a ship to take you back to Babylon 5 as soon as you are ready to travel. From there, you will continue to Minbar. Oh! I, I heard a new joke. <laughs> what is more dangerous? This is going to be a dad than joke. Than a locked room full of angry nons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What is more dangerous than a locked room full of angry nons? One angry non with the key. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, the key. Okay, that guy is obnoxious, but I love him. Uh oh. <laughs> A room full of angry narn. Is that your car? Wait, these guys are on 
Centaur. Okay, so very interesting opening. It's kind of a jumble of a few different things. There's Ivanova walking naked onto the bridge of CNC. That feels like time filler. The Star Trek universe, we call that pillar filler. That just feels like there's really nothing there. But Veer, it was a Veer thing. Although, oh, maybe Jeff's right because he started in the throne room and Veer is hilarious. He's absolutely hilarious. But whoever this dude is, this new Centauri guy, I don't think we've ever seen him before, have we? You can comment down below and just say, yes, you have seen him before. You don't have to tell me when or where, okay? Or or just tell me no this is your first time that's okay but uh he is obnoxious and rude and i really kind of love him all at the same time veer opens the door to a room full of narn on centauri prime i don't know one of those guys looked like he was asleep like maybe he was just a, a fake statue or something so okay let's find out what's gonna happen uh, as we go through this here we go londo <laughs> guys i'm telling you if i was on this show i'd want to play londo a hundred percent that's who i want to play as londo <laughs> he's got a sword <laughs> to trifle with the centauri you triple damned do you know that do you know that you are smaller than i thought you were you are smaller there are more of you, <laughs> there are more of you. yes <laughs> uh-oh lando got himself a new girl is this one of his this isn't you his are wife. ambassador malari my nope. dear lady for you, I would be anyone you want me to be. Please, come in. Come in. The is moving around. You've seen Ambassador Malari. He always meets me here. That dude doesn't even know who Ambassador Malari is. I have a surprise for you. Mm. A surprise? You can come out now. Did he get him the girl? <laughs> Hello, Veer. Is it not glorious, Veer? Your wife has come all this way just to see you. Oh, that's you. his wife. Lando, I'm not married. Not yet, but in a few days you will be. He will. If you ask me, she is far too good for you. Her name is Lindisty. And you'll be spending the yeah, rest that means of she can't life be good. with her. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. This ain't gonna go well. <laughs> hey, that's the same. That's the same thing he gave to Jakar when he like wanted to stand over his dead body. It was all arranged through your uncle and my mother, the Lady Drusella. While I was waiting for you, Ambassador Malari told me everything about you. Oh, don't worry, Veer. I only told her the good parts. There you go. It was a very short conversation. <laughs> <laughs> If you see something this big with eight legs coming your way, let me know. I have to kill it before it develops language skills. <laughs> when I married, I want it to be for love. Ah, uh, a radical. I'm sorry, that's just the way That's a I radical think. concept. If you give me a chance, I promise you when we cross beneath the swords and bows, it will be for love. You shall be the logical conclusion to all my happy thoughts and the borders of my world circumscribed by your two arms. Okay, something's wrong with this girl. Something's Do you it, like... think I'm pretty? Oh, yes, deliriously. But I always associated delirium with fever, so there you are. Then let me be a fever from which you never recover and our nights an anarchy of pleasure. There you go. Mm -hmm. Fear, our marriage has already been arranged. Everything that must be done has been done, except between She's us. Like, Let's do it now, right you now. Me away, Let's I go. I still be your wife in name, if not in fact. We noticed that the papers of transit came from your office on Minbar. 
considering you're the only He's person helping who knows the Narnia history, I figured That's you must cool. be responsible. Now, would you like to tell me what this is all about? I needed a name to put on the papers. It's part of our work program back home. We bring Narns from their home world to work in construction to help in the factories. It's much better than being back on Narn. The conditions there are very bad, I'm told. You're saying these Narns go voluntarily? Absolutely, yes. Well, then why the forgery, the fake names, the falsified transit papers? There are many Centauri who would rather see the Narns suffer back home than be given comfortable quarters too close to Centauri Prime. We're trying to help in our own way. No! 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 That's a shun He deserved that. You've been the hero long enough today. I've never been a hero before. Aww. I won't let them hurt you, Lindisty. Yeah, she's winning them over. Bad news, Veer. We think there may be another Narn out to finish what the first one started. What? How can you be sure? He arrived here with his pouch brother. A Shankara is a blood oath. If one member of the family fails to carry it out, it devolves into the next in line. I heard there was a woman with you. Is she all right? Yes, Lindesty, my wife. Well, soon to be. You know, it's it's done, but it's not really done. But uh, you know, it's she's my wife. Long, she's not really my wife, but she kind of is. Story, but you know, at first, you know, I didn't think, but now, well, she's. Well, you know, can I ask you a question as long as you're here? I suppose. Okay. What do women want when things get, um, you know, uh, um, <laughs> intimate? You know. <laughs> Um, I, I really don't think that, that we should be having this conversation, Vera. I mean, I, well, there must have been other women before this. There were other women, but I never got past one. You mean first base? No, no, I, I mean one. You see, we have six, uh... <gasps> We have six, you see. And each one has a different level of intimacy and pleasure. Wow. So, you know, First you have one, and that's, and then there's two, and then by the time you get to five, it's like. I'm, I'm here. I, got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh, I really don't know what to tell you, Vera. I mean, all I can say is that enthusiasm, sincerity, genuine compassion, humor can carry you through any lack of prior experience with high numerical value. Wow. I'm going to remember that. Thank you. Thank you. Six. Did she, what did she do with her hands? Wait a minute. I missed that. I was looking at my notes. I'm going to remember that. Thank you. <laughs> Six. Over the past couple of months, Veer has been forging travel papers for as many as 2,000 Narns, authorizing them to leave their homeworld for so-called work camps. Commander! What? Londo, please, don't pretend you don't know anything about this. I don't. This is a complete surprise to me. What makes you think I would know anything about this? Well, for starters, it's the kind of thing that only you could think of, Londo. Does Londo really know? Second, there's only one logical reason why another Narn would declare a Shankar and try and kill him. Revenge, according to the transit and relocation files, every one of them, all 2,000 Narns, all of them, are dead. That's 2,000 murders, Veer. No wonder the Narns are after you and anyone close to you. How much you want to bet they're not dead? They they just have, like, had their identities changed and, like, they're in witness protection or something like that. Good to see you showing some initiative, Veer. Initiative? It's murder. You say that as if it were a bad thing. Remember, it's nouns we're talking about here. A few dead, more or less. They're not dead. I told you. I told you. They're not? They're not. They had their identities you changed. They're in witness protection. You can't count on anything anymore. But the records, Fear. I altered the records so nobody would go looking for them. Why? Because I had to do to something. Keep them safe, you dumb nut. They were females and children. 
most of them were injured from us bombing their world and sending them to forced labor camps. They weren't getting proper treatment. If I hadn't gotten them out, they would have died. Everyone knows that wherever there's trouble, there's always a Narn at the center of it. They're simply inferior. They're lazy. Wow. They foul their own nests. Everything they touch falls apart. Hence my original conclusion. The sooner they're dealt with, the better for everyone. You don't really mean that, do you? Yes, of course I do. My yeah. dearest, fear, don't be silly. No matter how pretty she is, <laughs> saying ugly stuff like You're that makes her completely me, aren't you? repulsive. Playing with me. Well, I can play too. That's why I came to find you. I have something for you. Please, come. Your tenure as our liaison to Mimbar is over. You'll Ooh. stay here now, away from temptation and the authority that you misused. Well, I said I that, right? Continue your wait a instruction minute. in what it means to be Centauri. Wait, wait. I said that, right? That his his ambassadorial status is going to change. I nailed it. Come on. I mean, absolutely horrible, and I hate the way this is going on, but get my crown out. Put my crown back on. <laughs> okay. That's me. This is Centauri. Nope. That's Abrahamo Lincoln of the Centauri Relocation Bureau. Veer did a very good job creating a fake bureaucrat. Launder doesn't know about him, and he's still authorized to issue travel papers, so I figured... Why not take advantage of it? Keep him around for a while. So I added a few details, a photo from your file. Yeah, I've noticed. I'm not sure I like the coat. So how many Narns do you think that picture doesn't look here sure can at all. get out of danger before the Centauri figure it out? Beats me. It seems like even one would be a victory. And to tell you the truth, I, I hate to say this, but uh, I think I'd really enjoy being a sneak. Then I hereby appoint you the official Babylon 5 sneak in residence. Oh, thank you. Now get the hell out of my chair. Oh, yes, sir. And may I say, sir, from the bottom of my heart, that you make an absolutely charming Centauri. I like the New York. I like the textures I, I know on the new uniform. some problems towards the end there. And I definitely think we need to talk about it. But I think you can change. It's just some of your ideas. They need rehabilitation. They say the same about you. They say that you are confused, but that you will get better in time. I hope not. Well, either way, I will wait for you. You don't have to do that. No, but I will. I will see you again, Veer. Soon. Well, what relationships don't have their ups and downs? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So that's an episode. Well, I laughed a lot during this episode. And if you can make me laugh, that's going to make me like your episode almost always. I don't know that I would say I liked this episode, but I didn't not like it. You know, like it, it was a decent hour of TV. Like I thought it was fine. This would be, I think, probably what I call a laundry episode. But my God, did this do so much for Veer. And honestly, it did a lot for Londo. Like this really, I, you know, I've been holding out hope for Londo, for the redemption of Londo Malari. He's the guy that I liked. That that season one Londo, who was this old guy who was kind of realizing where he'd been in life and what was going on with him. And now he's starting to come out of that and he's going to become this hero. And yeah, he's done this bad stuff, but maybe he has the opportunity to to turn it around and become the hero who's going to save but i don't think that's him the hero is going to be veer and it should be veer and veer is the best of us veer is the guy like this is he's the, that the, even that speech he gave her right there at the end like i i believe you can change even after everything she said he still believed in her he still believed in her oh my gosh i gotta write that down and what he believed was in her ability to change i mean is veer just just not on the wrong show like veer should be on star trek i mean this is this this is that hope of the future this is doing what sci-fi to forget star trek veer is exactly where he needs to be i don't know don't nobody kill me or nobody nobody send me messages okay this is what sci-fi should be doing this these are the messages that sci-fi should be sending out there and and 
making happen. So while this may not be like the, oh my God, I love this episode. I have a lot of respect for this episode and I can only imagine the more I watch it, the more respect I'll have it. I'll have for it. So Dr. Franklin's running a, a, what do you call it? An underground railroad, or at least he was for a time running underground railroad. And then we got Veer who's effectively doing the same thing, trying to help the Narn get out. He's, he's relocating them and, and helping them hide, change their identities. You know, it, it, it's, oh, it's just a good episode. Like I have to watch this one again before I go record with Jeff. I have to. And Jeff and I are supposed to record in 10 minutes. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. I just, yeah, I, I need to sit with this one for a few minutes, y'all. So I'm going to get out of here. You guys make sure you join us on, on Monday when Jeff and I release that episode and, and you'll give our full thoughts. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll, I'm going to, I might push this one back for Jeff and I, uh, cause, cause I need, I need some time to sit with this one. Um, I like it. I like it. Uh, probably not my favorite episode of the season, not a banger, but a deep message. Like I, I dig this one a lot. So, uh, yeah, you guys make sure you join us on Monday, like subscribe, all that sort of stuff. You guys are awesome. We'll talk to you later. Bye now.